Good morning, friends. Before we begin our worship this day, I wanted to let you know that the bishop has decided, and for good reason, I think, to suspend all of our indoor face-to-face -face worship uh, through uh, July the 1st. Um, obviously, we all want to come back together again to church, but it's still just not the right time, as I've said before. Uh, we want to come back when it's safe for all of us, and Tuscaloosa has had another spike in uh, diagnosed coronavirus cases, and so after talking with um, so many different churches and different people, the bishop decided to suspend worship uh, through July the 1st. He is allowing outdoor worship in certain situations, and I've talked with the vestry and members of the parish, and well, you know, even if we had outdoor worship, not everybody could come back together. And so as I've said before, I think we'll come back together as the church when all of us can come back. And so until then, you're going to have to keep putting up with the whole unholy trinity of me and Quincy and John. We pray for you every day. We think of you always. And we always together will be St. Matthias, whether we're worshiping here in this building or worshiping together from our homes.
Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with the Venite on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Today's psalm is on page 736 in the prayer book, a portion of Psalm 104, verses 25 through 35 and verse 37. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number, creatures both great and small. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, for you give them food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Hear now the reading from the book of Acts, the second chapter, beginning with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Or, il y avait en ces jours à Jérusalem des Juifs, impieux de toutes les nations qui sont sous le ciel. Au bruit qui eut lieu, la multitude accourut, et elle fut confondue parce que chacun les entendait parler dans sa propre langue. Ils étaient tous dans l'étonnement et la surprise, et ils se disaient les uns aux autres, « Voici !» Ces gens qui parlent ne sont-ils pas tous Galiléens Et comment les entendons-nous dans notre propre langue à chacun, dans notre langue maternelle Ici, il y a des gens de Parthia, de Média, de Elam, de Mesopotamie, de Judée, de Cappadocia, du Ponto et de la province de Asie, de Phrygia et de Pamphylia, d'Égypte y de las regiones de Libia cercanas a Sirene. Hay también gente de Roma que vive aquí. Unos son judíos de nacimiento y otros se han convertido al judaísmo. 
También los hay venidos de Creta y de Arabia, y los oímos hablar en nuestras propias lenguas de las maravillas de Dios. Todos estaban asombrados y sin saber qué pensar, y se preguntaban, ¿qué significa todo esto? Pero algunos, burlándose, decían, es que están borrachos. Atti secondo, 14 de Gisei. Ma Pietro, lavatose i piedi con gli undici, alzò la voce pa loro così. Gli uomini di Guadea e voi tutti che abitate in Gerusalemme, vi sia notte questo e ascoltate attentamente le mie parole. Queste non sono ubracci, come voi sopranete, perché ho soltanto la terza ora del giorno. E acontecerà nos últimos dias, diz o Senhor, que derramarei do meu espírito sobre toda a carne, e os vossos filhos e as vossas filhas profetizarão. Os vossos mancebos terão visões, os vossos anciãos terão sonhos. E sobre os meus servos e sobre as minhas servas derramarei do meu espírito naqueles dias, e eles profetizarão. Voi face să se arate semne sus în cer și minuni jos pe pământ, sânge, foc și nor de fum. Soarele se va preface în întuneric și luna în sânge, înainte de a veni ziua arătării mărețe și strălucite a Domnului. Și va fi așa, oricine va chema numele Domnului va fi mântuit. Amin. Here ends the reading of the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Vanderbilt. 
Michigan was number two and Louisville was number three. Now, I'm not really much on college basketball, but I was surprised to see that the University of Dayton Flyers were ranked number three in the nation when the whole season ended suddenly due to the coronavirus. I guess I didn't realize that the Daytona Flyers were that good. Of course, if I'm honest, I have to admit, I didn't even realize there was a University of Dayton. I do remember that LSU won the National Football Championship beating Clemson, but do you remember who came in third? We don't usually pay attention who, to who comes in third in much of anything, whether it's baseball, football, or dancing with the stars, except maybe when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Every Sunday we proclaim God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have no trouble remembering who comes third. It's always the Holy Spirit. Early Greek Christians referred to the Holy Spirit as a tertium quid, which roughly translates that third thing. They weren't quite sure what to do with this third person of the Trinity, and sometimes neither are we. Old Christians know Jesus from the Gospels. We have all seen the art of the great masters depicting God the Father. But the Holy Spirit's another matter. Did you know that Michelangelo left the third person of the Trinity off the Sistine Chapel ceiling? Rembrandt's paintings included over 300 different biblical scenes, but none of the Holy Spirit. What we know and what those early Christians knew about the Holy Spirit pretty much comes exclusively from what we've read in the scriptures and what we experience in our lives. From the book of Genesis, we remember that in the beginning, before anything was created, the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. It was the Holy Spirit that descended like a dove as John baptized Jesus in the River Jordan. The Spirit inspired the prophets, comforted the exiles of Babylon, and guided the Apostle Paul to spread the gospel message throughout the world. And on this day, we celebrate the Holy Spirit because it is the Feast of Pentecost. This day is often called the birth of the church, not because a building was built that was named St. John's or St. Mary's or even St. Matthias. No, in today's first lesson from the book of Acts, we hear the story of the birth of the church in the streets of Jerusalem, and there were no crosses or altars or organs or priests. Instead, the apostles proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of heaven, and people heard that message, and they believed. It all began as the disciples were gathered together. Some traditions tell us that it was in the very same upper room where the disciples had celebrated the Last Supper with Jesus. From there, the Savior was arrested, tried, convicted, crucified, buried, and then there was the victory of the resurrection on an Easter Sunday morning. The resurrected Christ appeared to the amazed and astonished disciples for the next 40 days and then ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. It was an absolutely amazing 50 or so days, and one of the last promises of Jesus was that he would send the Holy Spirit to lead and guide the disciples. And in the lesson from the book of Acts this morning, the disciples are gathered in that upper room, and I can just imagine that they were looking at one another and asking, so now what do we do? Suddenly, the scriptures tell, us, the room was filled with the sound of a loud rushing wind. One professor of mine said it probably sounded like a train coming through your living room. But it was the Holy Spirit, and this time it appeared to be tongues of fire shooting through the disciples. They were filled with the very Spirit of God and began to speak in other languages. From there, the disciples went into the streets and proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ so that everyone from everywhere who was in Jerusalem could understand. And the miracle was not that the disciples could master a totally foreign language in the blink of an eye. No, the miracle of God that day was that through these early Christians, these everyday, ordinary people, God's work was done by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the same can happen in you and me. The problem is that this is the problem. It's exactly what we're afraid of sometimes. That what does it mean for the Holy Spirit to work in us? Does it mean we're going to have to speak in other languages, in other tongues, to utter some prophecy or levitate to the ceiling? 
It's not what the Holy Spirit looks like that bothers us so much, I think, as it is what the Holy Spirit does, and particularly does through us. It's okay for God the Father to create me and God the Son to save me, but I'm not going to handle snakes. And I'll bet you that the disciples would have told us that we have the wrong idea. You see, the Holy Spirit is at work all around us and just may fill us, and we don't even realize it sometimes. In case you hadn't realized it today, the Holy Spirit is with us all around us, wherever we are, filling you and me. And you will know it when you greet your neighbor, call the shut-in, give clothes to the needy, or send a card to a sick person in order to spread the love and grace of our Savior. It is then that we come to realize exactly what it is that the Holy Spirit does, and all we are asked to do is believe. You will likely never see the Holy Spirit coming. There won't be any snakes, but you will certainly feel God. And when you find yourself in an upper room this week, wondering what to do, open your heart and love God's people. I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will be right there along with the Father and the Son. Amen. Amen. Let us now together proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 3, are found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, and that, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Grant to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints, especially Pearl Slade, who have entered into your joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. The Buffington family, Stephanie Miller, Deborah Croft Hedrick, Thad Spree, Deanna Steele, Willie Slay, the Slay family, and Father Frank Rowe. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, 
It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now may you go with the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.